Okay, what up, what up? Welcome back to another episode of the We Outside podcast. We are outside because we are not home. So today I'm at So Cheesy with a friend of mine. Um, this is a key example of when a client turns into a really good friend. I've known this guy for like almost three years, four years now. Yeah, about three uh, and a half years. Yeah, about like, about like three, three and a half years now. And this is like he is an entrepreneur here in Dearborn, Michigan. He owns two stores that I know about. I don't know how much other stuff that he does. Um, so hopefully I get to know. But this is the one and only A to the B, Ali Bazi. What up, what up? Hello, brother. Thank you for having Thank you for coming, bro. Thanks Thank you for coming. Me, Thank you for being on the show, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. <clears throat> Talk to me. How was everything? We chilling. We chilling? How you been? We chilling? Got a little cigars. I actually, I've never smoked cigars, bro. So you're going to have to teach me. We're going to teach you how to smoke a cigar. Okay. The real way. When did you start smoking cigars? Uh, years. Six? On and off. No, Six? on and off, honestly, since I was like 18. You got into cigars at 18? I mean, cigars. Cigars, on and off. Okay. And uh, this year, I kind of really just It's like a normal it. thing for... for Lebanese people to get out No, eating. so my uncle honestly had a cigar shop, cigar lounge back in the day. Yeah. And I'd go up there and then he opened and he closed it down and he opened one here in the city and I'd go hang out there and kind of that's how we got, you know, I got into it. But yeah, definitely I've been doing it on and off for like a good 14 years. So what do you do for like years. recreational, just chill, like, yeah. your, like downtime? Yeah, a couple of cigars a week, a good seven, cool. eight, nine cigars a week. I used to smoke <laughs> cigarettes, but I never smoked a cigar. I smoked cigarettes for a little while, for a few months. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so just to introduce yourself, brother, what do you do? How, how would you identify yourself? Hmm? Bezi, man. Like, so young entrepreneur, started off young, 21, first business. Oh, damn. Yeah. So we got into the medical transportation company at 21. Um, still do it till this day. Yeah. And then throw See, my I didn't know that. yeah. I didn't. Know, I don't know. You still do it. Yeah, yeah. But I have a partner. He kind of runs the day to day. Um, I just oversee everything now. Um, and then the last three years, maybe or so, I got into like the actually five years ago, I got into the food truck business, mm -hmm. and then got into the restaurant business. That's crazy, bro. Definitely. What What is um, what was Ali Bazi like when he was like younger, like a young man? You know what I mean? Like he said, he got in twenty one. So say like at like 16, 17, how, how so like, honestly, like, like, what were you like? What were you thinking your life was going to be like at that time? I was always a hustler. I was always an entrepreneur from my little kid. Like oh. I was in elementary school, I remember, and I was selling Pokemon cards. No way. Yeah, I'd go buy, like my parents would buy me like a pack of Pokemon cards and I'd go back and sell them on the, you know, to my friends for a dollar, two dollars a card. We'd sell them U2s the cards, and the Charizards. And <laughs> yeah, we used to sell, bro, I used to sell... Pencils, like sport pencils, go buy them in a pack, sell them for 25 cents a piece. This was in elementary hustling. school. You yeah. And then throughout my high school years and early college years, I was flipping cell phones, Blackberries and iPhones, uh -huh. TVs, but mostly iPhones. Um, when I was like 19, 20, I would go to the U of M library, second floor, backpack. So you went to college? Couple years, yeah, but I didn't finish. Me neither. I ended up becoming an entrepreneur instead. Me neither, bro. Yeah, it wasn't for me. Yeah, but at least you went to U of M. I went to a community. I didn't go to U of M. I oh. go to the library oh. with a backpack full of iPhones. <laughs> and I, went, I wouldn't leave until I sold every phone, literally. Oh, yeah? yeah, so I did that for a Where while. Where did that come too. from? Is like from your family? Is like your family like this or what? Because I know I, like no. in Dearborn, like predominantly Arabic, predominantly a lot of people are doing like business stuff and in the medical field. But like, where did that come from? No, honestly, just. Uh, it was just a me thing. Like in my family, like there really isn't many entrepreneurs. Mm. We're obviously like I'm Arabic, and majority of the Arabs, you know, are, are entrepreneurs. Yeah. My family were most of them were nine to fivers. You know. Oh. Um. My dad was a nine to my dad was a nine to fiver, but he used to work like twenty hours a day, um, to provide for us and the rest of my family. Same thing. You got you any know? siblings? Yeah, I got two. I got a brother and a sister younger than me. I've never met them. So my brother doesn't live here. He lives uh, out in Ottawa, Canada. What the heck? He lives like eight hours. My parents live there too now. What the Yeah, they, they migrated there like nine years ago, maybe more. But uh, more than nine years ago, like 10 years or 11 years ago. But yes, yeah, so my brother lives there. I got a sister that lives here. She's a pharmacist. I never met the sister. Yeah, I don't even see her. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, she's a pharmacist here and she's married. And Damn, bro. Yeah. What about you, bro? Ain't, not, ain't nothing about me, bro. I'm 
They, what, what, what you want to know about me? There's nothing much to know about me. I don't know. You tell me. <sighs> Shit, bro. How's your uh, entrepreneur career been? I know you've been doing some crazy things. I mean, the way, the way we met is kind of crazy, right? So at the, at the time three years ago when I met you, really the weddings was the only thing that we were doing and like getting a rest, like doing a restaurant job was like uh was something that like they could bring in like consistent money right and so running into you i realized that shit is hard you want to light up huh yeah light up wow. this is the, the one you're giving me right yeah it's a light boy for okay, you okay yeah but so you gotta light okay, it up all right, all right, so i'm gonna i look like a little bitch now bro i don't even know how to hold that shit <laughs> And so now, you're going to put it on your mouth. You're going to light it up like this. So as you're hitting it, oh. you're lighting. So you're like this. Puff. Okay. As it's, as it's torched. Mm. And spin it. You got to spin it. So you get every side. Keep going a little more, a little more. Almost there. Perfect. Blow it up. Kill it. it. Don't inhale. Cigarette habit, bro. She kind of light. Yeah, I give you a light boy. Thank you. So tell me. Do I look cool, man? No, you look like a man. Look oh, at yeah. oh, yeah. Like a G. Thank you, brother. Thank you for like. Oh, yeah, Mahin's behind the camera if you guys. But Mahin's producing this today. Today, just me and my boy. Mahin, uh, you smoking? You guys go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, bro. So, so 21, you started in the medical field, right? Yes. When did you get married? When did you get married? 24. I mean, you're 24. Three years after. Yeah, but uh, well, where'd you meet your his wife's name is Hiam. When did you when did you meet Hiam? I met Hiam in high school. She was a sophomore and I was a junior. Oh, catch him young, huh? Yeah, we caught him young. <laughs> we, were, we were fishing. <laughs> fishing young. But yeah, no, I met her in high school and uh, high school sweethearts, and we've been together for since like 2007. Yeah. Long time. She's great, bro. More than half my life, literally, like 17 years. Honestly, I think she's a really good person, Thanks, bro. I person, appreciate bro. it. And then some of the tidbits that she gives me about, like, marriage and, like, having a husband that's, like, an yeah. entrepreneur. Yeah. Like, more her passing by conversations. I don't know, most of the time I meet her, like, all jokes and stuff like that, but she gives me some good tidbits, bro. She's definitely my better half, for sure. 100%, brother. 100%. Okay. What made you transition into the, uh, the medical field, the, uh, the medical transportation field? From the medical to, to the restaurant business? No, how'd you get into the medical field in the first place? Because you were hustling. So, Cell phones. <clears throat> I worked five years, well, when I fir my first job, I started doing endoscopy repair. So I worked at a company doing um, repair and endoscopy, so medical scopes and whatnot. Left there because I just, I wanted to do something bigger and better, right? Yeah. So I was searching. Uh, but in the meantime, I was working at a gas station. I started running a gas station and stuff. Didn't work out. Um, I left. And then a, a buddy of mine called me. He's like, hey, you know, I need, I need, we need workers. Mm. So I was like, I'll take the job. Like, I'm, I'm in between jobs right now. I'll work. He's like, they're only paying X amount of dollars. Like, you know, it's ain't. Yeah. It's like, I got it. Don't worry. Um, worked for a guy for about almost two years. And then ended up doing my own thing. And. We, I learned from, you know, from him. So you worked there and then you got the experience and then you started your own, Definitely. right? Definitely, yep. You started your and own. Then, or did you just take over whatever was going so on? I, I took out, so I took over a little bit of what he had because he was getting out mm. and then transitioned to growing the company. Um, I partnered up with a buddy of mine. How much that His cost dad you? Owned, it cost me a lot. Everything I had at the time. Everything you had at the yeah, time. Oh, literally, okay. I gambled on myself every time. Every time you gambled on yourself? I always gambled on myself. So when um, do you put this out? Like, what do you mean? Like, when do you ash it? When it's like, oh, when you ash it? Yeah. No, you need a little more. But you don't ash it like a cigarette. Okay. You roll. Ah, you roll the ash out. Okay, okay. Yo, this makes you want to take a shit. I'm not going to lie, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. We can pause if you want. Yeah. No, no, no. No, we don't have to pause. <laughs> I do want to mention an interesting character I, I met today, Big Red, bro. Big Red's, not be Big Red's behind the camera, bro. Very interesting. Very intimidating man, bro. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna put him on next time for yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 definitely. Hundred percent. Make up a soul just a Yes, of giggles. course, brother. You're 42 years old. 42. 48, huh? but yeah, 48. 42. You don't look 48. You look like a goddamn biker from Hell's the Hell's Angels. You're badass. I would love to put you on there. <laughs> 
Bayali, okay, so then uh, that happened, that was successful, I'm, I'm guessing? Yeah, so we, we grew this business and we've had it for 13 years now. Um, but it just wasn't my passion. Like uh -huh. I didn't, I, I didn't enjoy what I was doing, you know? Like I'd wake up in the morning, 3, 3 in the morning to go to work at 4 in the morning and yeah. I hated my life. Okay. I didn't even know I hated my life at the time, but I did. Um, then got into the food business. Um, my partner's cousin actually wanted to partner up on a transportation company out in Chicago. Mm. And I was like, not going to happen, but I'm getting into something else. Yeah. Um, and I threw it at him. The first time I met, this is the first time I meet this guy, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, but this is what we're going to do. And he's like, all right. What was the idea? So we opened up a food truck, a Canadian franchise. Um, no longer have it. What, what was it called? Um, Beaver Tales. Beaver Tales. So it's, okay. it's one of the bigger franchi Canadian franchises. Yeah. Um, it just, love the people, love, love the brand. Just wasn't for me, you mm -hmm. know? But that was your I first, was limited. So, oh, that was like your first dib into the, like, the, like food. the food? Yeah, so it was like dessert, like almost like elephant ears, but it can, you know, yeah, the yeah, dough yeah. you stretch, we topped it off, poutine, a few other things. Yeah. But you're limited, like you're in a franchise, you can't be creative. You just got to do what they tell you to do, and that's it, right? Right. So then COVID happened, um, opened up a nutrition shop, Easy Urban Nutrition, and then... That's the first place I know you for. Yeah, that's how we met, through yes. Easy Urban Nutrition. Um, we actually had, I had that store for three years, and I just closed it down, transitioned it into something else completely different. Mm -hmm. But um, from Easy Urban Nutrition, I ended up doing where did something East, where called... Did East, uh, where, where did EDN come from? Like, like where did so it was around. So I, there was a store in, in, on the other side of town that West did this. It was just called Dearborn Nutrition. Shout okay. out to Dearborn Nutrition. Check them out, guys. Mm -hmm. um, so they, I would go there and get protein shakes, you know, and I'd get like energizing iced tea that was zero calories and no sugar. And I was like, all right, bet. Like, this is it, right? And I was like, man, like, I see something here. I want in on it. So I talked to the guys like, yo, I want to open up a store. What's it take? He's like, all right, I'll help you. And funny story, he told, he was telling me he wanted to open up in this exact place that we're in right now. Mm. And I told him, let's do it. He's like, I tried. I talked to the landlord three times and he just didn't believe in the vision. I was like, I got it. I'm going to go talk to him today. And I'm gonna, so we're going to sign a lease today. He's like, all right, go do it. And I'm going to open it up for you. Oh, so you knew the guy that was I didn't there. know. Oh, you didn't know. I came here. I met with him. I told him, this is what I'm doing. I'm opening up here. And that's it. <laughs> the guy looked at me. He was an older man. Yeah. He's like, okay. Sign, oh. sign a lease on the spot. Call them, come sign a lease. And we just start renovations. A month and a half so later. EDN was with somebody. With the, so no, it, they own Dearborn Nutrition. Uh -huh. So we just made this East Dearborn Nutrition. Okay, 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 okay. But it was my store. He just helped me kind of build it up. Build yeah, it out, yeah. right? And taught me, you know, what he knew. Um, it was great. We ran with it for almost three years. But, I mean, every good thing comes to an end, right? Absolutely. So... It's not that it wasn't good anymore. It's just, again, I'm doing so many things. And, and during this time period where I'm growing restaurants and stuff, I wanted to continue growing what I like, right? Mm -hmm. So we ended up, let's rewind a little. Yeah. So after Beaver Tales, we still own Beaver Tales, but we had this food truck, right? Ramadan, well, Ramadan was coming. Yeah. I had two weeks, two and a half weeks. And I had this idea like, man, I want to open up a restaurant out of this food truck. And... I was sitting in the shop on the couch, and I was like, holy cluck. And my worker's like, what happened? So it was a, that truck was originally Beaver, Beaver Tales. No yeah. way. I had no idea, bro. Yeah. So we literally wrapped, we, wrapped, like, we kept the wrap on there, when mm -hmm. we just re-wrapped over it. Not even the whole thing. I literally just wrapped the front and the two sides, the back. I didn't even wrap it. It was so Beaver Tales. So Beaver Tales, when But no one can close? see it. So we had, we just recently, I signed back my rights to the franchisors. Oh. Because I wasn't, that's it, like I wasn't going to do anything with it and I didn't want to renew my contract. Like it just, in Canada, this business is a booming business. Like we got into this business because I would go visit my parents and me and Hiyan, my wife, would be walking downtown Ottawa and we'd see these crazy lines. Like what the heck is this? Yeah. And one day we tried it and I'm like, wow, like this, this pastry is amazing. Mm -hmm. And my wife's like, this is what we're going to do next. And I'm like, ah, okay. And then she's like, no, that's what we're doing next. And we did it. And I was like, all right, so what you want to do is we're going to do it. Um, and that's how it happens. But just, it's, it's, a, it's a Canadian cultural thing, right? So, like, it's the taste of Canada. So, in Canada, everyone knows what Beaver Tales is and they die for it. 
trying to introduce it here with a with a different culture, a different mindset, it takes a lot of time and energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, like I was so limited in what I was able to do, and that's not me. Like you know how I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to create. Like I open up so many different businesses because I love creating the business. I love creating content. I love creating things and building things. And so it's just time to let no, go. No, I would say that like like being around you for so long, that's that's one thing that you're that like. I've never seen you so hyped to start something. Like I've like regular stuff, like oh yeah, I sold like like yeah, I made this much money, I did this, yo, look at this, you know what I mean? Look how many people I have outside. I don't think that excites you more than when you were building this place out, because this is fairly new. We you literally said, work. I don't want EDM no more, I want so cheesy in here. And then it happened within like a week and I just came in and everything was free for me. But you were so excited. Yeah, granted you were exhausted. Literally. But you were so excited, like a little kid. Bro, I remember we'd be here to like. Three, so I knew four that was morning. like that was like your, your fix. Like you I, I just like building things. Like yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's like, I don't know. It's like, like a you're hobby. very much a creative. In a different kind of sense, the more the builder franchise, like you know what I mean, like the more of the business creative. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah, we opened up Holy Clock. We had I had a food truck that I had to convert. And this right after COVID or before COVID. This was the right after COVID. right after COVID. Right after COVID. And that's when like restrictions were kind of like coming down a little, Mm -hmm. but still you couldn't be in gatherings. So I was like, all right, let me capitalize on this. I got a food truck. It's outdoors. We're allowed to be outdoors. Yeah. It's cold, but whatever. We're going to make it happen. And two and a half weeks later, we opened up. I advertised the day before. Mm -hmm. No advertisement at all. Day before I, uh, I posted and I had Halal Food Junkie come out and post for me. Shout out to Halal Food Junkie. A great influencer. Abe's a great people. And the next day, I come to open up, and I had a line outside my doors. And I'm like, okay, what the heck's going on? And I sold out within 40 minutes. I was like, damn, like, this is crazy. Was that their opening day, or was that their Ramadan day? You came that next weekend. That weekend, yeah, the weekend after, yeah. I remember when we came with the drone, and there was a long line. That was the first video for Holy Cluck we uh, did. It yes. was Ramadan, yeah. You came too, I remember. Yeah, yeah you remember? Yeah. Um, and we sold out. For that 30 days of Ramadan, every single night except for one night, and we were selling about 600 sandwiches a night wow. within a two, two and a half hour time frame. Alhamdulillah. We were just selling two different sandwiches. We had a little bigger menu. We had like five items on the menu. After the first night, we realized we weren't going to be able to handle the volume. And so we took everything off the menu. We left two sandwiches, the exact same, a holy cluck and a cluck sandwich. One is Nashville, and one is not a Nashville chicken sandwich. What are the, the holy cluck brand come from? <clears throat> Like with the chicken and everything. So like I, that. I knew the Nashville chicken trend was on the rise outside of Michigan, right? Yeah, yeah. So you, there's a few stores that were doing um, Nashville chicken, but there was no like actual Nashville chicken shop in our within our area, right? Within our community. Like the main sandwich, like the. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay, this is how they do it. I, by the way, I have no restaurant experience other than other than Beaver Tails, and that's not really a restaurant, mm-hmm. right? So I started tweaking, going on the internet, searching, doing some research, grab some so like Beaver Tail was more like that. That framework is already there for you. Done. You just paid for it and picked it up. I literally paid. But Holy Cluck was from done. bottom up. Literally. Um, and yeah, we just ran with it. And I mean, every every month we were tweaking it for till this day. We're still tweaking things. Yeah. Like nothing stays the same, right? If you get too comfortable in your business, I promise you will fail. Because someone else is going to come and do a better job than you. Maybe at this time, you're the only one or you're one of the only ones and you get comfortable, right? And then someone else comes and does it better. And then you're like, shoot, now what? Right? I just got my ass kicked. Now you should ash that. Just roll it slightly. That's it. Do I need to light it up again or no? No, I'm just keep saying. Nice. Right? Yeah. And, and by the way, that's what's happening right now in, this, in, in the Dearborn community, by yeah. the way. So we have so many Yemeni coffee shops opening up. And every corner you see a new Yemeni shop, right? Haraz, and especially Kawa House. Kawa House, <coughs> Kawa House there's Haraz, there's Azad right next door. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Azad, we're drinking their coffee right now. Yes, sir. Um, you got Jabba that just opened up in West Dearborn, killing it. Yeah. Lines out the door. They made this place so aesthetically beautiful from the aesthetic to the coffee to the customer service, like they nailed it, literally. So you got so many people opening up, what happens now? Now, even though your, your place is 
beautiful. You everything is great. But you're old news now. But you're old news. How do you stay relevant? Yes. You gotta keep changing things up. You gotta switch things up. So on Holy Clock, the last year and a half, we we went from doing slider sandwich sandwiches to full size sandwiches to to elevating the sandwich where we just recently, a couple of months ago, we released a brand new elevated menu. You, obviously, yeah. you came, you shot, the, you shot the footage for I us. I would say this, like, the reason why I only come to Dearborn is to shoot for you and you only. And, it's the, and I think it's the reason because not everybody's changing their menu. Everybody's sticking to what works, their brand, and staying with that and then writing that out. And then they're like, oh, okay, I'll add one more sandwich. But you're doing it every single month. Every you single keep, month, you, you bring me in. And every single month, there's a brand new uh, menu item or some kind of concept that you want to work on. You got to spice things up, man. You can't stay the same. There's so much competition out there. You can have the best chicken sandwich, right? Yeah. But that's only relevant to, who, to me, for example. Mahim might come and say, hey, I don't like, the, you don't like your chicken sandwich. You can't please everyone. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. But you have to stay relevant in the sense of, okay, you have a great chicken sandwich. What's next? Bring out monthly specials, right? Mm -hmm. Show everyone your creative um, capabilities. Show them your culinary experience in the restaurant culinary business. Yes. You know, now a big thing for me is I was so much, okay, the food, the food, the food. And I'm like, okay, listen, the food's great. But if you don't walk in the door and your experience all the way around is wow, you ain't coming back because someone else is, gonna, is, is giving you a better experience, right? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Right now, for example, me. What am I offering the customer? What are you offering the customer? Do you know what you're offering? You're offering a service, right? An yes. experience. Yes. It goes beyond the experience. Yeah. 100%. I was in a meeting yesterday. So we have this food and beverage meeting that we do uh, once a month at Atlaw Group. We do this whole like thing. We round table. We get together. Everyone's welcome in the food and beverage industry, and we just kind of just run ideas by each other. Yeah. And the topic was. What are you serving? Everyone was saying smiles, experience, culture, great food. And that's all true. Everyone is serving that. Yeah. But it goes beyond that. And I went home and I was like, man, there's more to it. And then after sitting and thinking to myself, I realized it's not just that. We are all in the business of selling a solution. Mm. So you're a photographer and what are you selling? A solution for someone that's getting married. For someone that has content for their business that they need to push out. Yes. I'm selling what? A mother that's working, a father that's working, they have children, picking them up from daycare, and the mother didn't have time to cook. Mm -hmm. I'm selling her a solution. Here's your solution, right? You're hanging out with your boys. You guys need a quick bite. I'm the solution. Yeah. So every business out there is selling a solution. You're not selling just a product. The product is everyone's selling a product, mm -hmm. but it goes beyond that. And then, other than, then underneath solution comes product, comes experience, comes the culture behind what you're serving, right? The hospitality. Hospitality nowadays is more important, in my opinion, than the product you're serving. Because you're coming in and... I very much under, under, understand that. Because even with our clients, it's like, why would they pay us when they can go to somebody else that has more experience, per se, right? They have more experience or their video looks better. But in the initial phone call that I, that I have with them and how, the, how I leave them on that phone call where it's like, oh, I trust this guy. He's going to be fun to work with. And also, I know I'm in good hands. That's why, they, that's why we get bookings. And like, you know, a lot, and we don't advertise like that and stuff like that, which is our fault. And I know you'll give me shit about it. But like most of the time when I'm on that phone call with that client, all I'm trying to do is tell them like everything will be okay. I will capture everything for you and you'll have a good memory of it and on top of that we'll be there to help you all the way through so they have that ease of mind you know what i mean 100%. but you're right hospitality is 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 a lot important especially what you do yeah your especially, business is yeah. hospitality yeah, yeah literally like you you know what you're gonna give them yes they know what they're going to get because 100 percent when they come to you they make that phone call yeah they saw your social media yeah. they saw your work they understand this is what we want right yeah they're already coming to me yeah but how are you going to sell them 100%? Exactly. exactly. Personality, I guess, you know? Money is not, is not the issue, right? Especially when you're giving them that once in a lifetime like experience, experience right? Yes, yes. Especially when you, what, you, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. This is once in a lifetime. You should a wedding. If you mess up. That's it. 
you're axed out. Like you're yeah, that entire family, that community will completely. You're done. Out. Yeah. Come and shoot a, a, a wedding here in Dearborn. Give them a bad experience. You mess up on that thing one time. Yes. I promise you, it'll spread like wildfire. You're axed out. You're done. Yeah. yeah. So again, like this is. So do you think that relates to all businesses? Hundred percent. It's so hard to to give a to, for someone to give you a second chance, especially nowadays, mm. because there's so much competition. Yeah. Right. There's a hundred and one, <coughs> excuse me, restaurants, especially in our in my area. Yeah. There's a restaurant between a restaurant and a restaurant. There's another restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, you just gotta be on on your tippy toes all the time. So and all this you've learned. Just being in it, right? Hundred percent. You learn. I learn everything. Every I learn something new every single day. Right. For me to come and tell you, hey, I'm the smartest guy out there. I'm the wisest, or I know it all. Even in my business, I'll be lying to you. Like I still do my research. I still study. I still. I mean, like, I, like you know, last year where I was. Last year around this time, I went to Italy. Yeah. Right. For what? For a for an expo. Just to go learn. Like yeah. I want to see. What's out there? What's everyone doing, right? Mm -hmm. what, are the, what are the big dogs? Because I don't consider myself the big dogs. There's big dogs that have 20, 30, 50, 800. I know a place that does what we do has 800 plus stores. Literally. Yeah. In a matter of two years, they build 800 stores. Those are big dogs, right? Kudos to them. Like they're, they're killing it. Um, so how are, how they grow so fast? What did they do? How do they stay so successful and and almost every time give you the same product, right? Yeah. So you, you got to do your research. You got to do your due diligence. So you, you got to go out up. and learn, basically, right? Yeah, you have to. Like, I would, I'll tell you, like, you're good at what you do. No offense, you're not the best. There's always going to be someone you're better. Always there's be always someone better than me, you know? Yeah. Um, there's people just more experienced. Do you, get, do you get, like, discouraged when you see stuff like that? Like, no, I, 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 I learn. Like, bro, I'll give you an example. We have Holy Clock in Dearborn Heights. Yeah. National Chicken Joint. Someone opened up a couple miles away from us. Very, almost the same thing that we do, right? I could be the average person and think, man, F these guys are copying me. They're this, they're that. Bro, I'm not, I didn't create the National Chicken Sandwich. I didn't even create the Chicken Sandwich or anything on my menu. Like, this, someone had done this before me. Yeah, yeah. I replicated someone else from somewhere else. And there's enough room, enough room for everyone to grow, right? Yeah. The first day, he'd stop opening. I, go, I don't even know the guy. My brother on Zane knows that guy. He's like, let's go try him out. We go. We, this guy was like, oh, man, thank you for coming. Like, respect, you know. Walk, he's like, come in my food truck. Let me show you how we do things. I was like, man, that's okay. This is great. By the way, just out of experience, you can get this from here, this from here. You can save money here, blah, 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 by doing one, two, three. He's like, damn, like, I, I appreciate it. Like, who, no one would come and say Nobody this. No one would come and help a yeah. competition, right? This guy told us, this guy's in my shop every single day, by the way. When he runs out of something, he calls me. When I run out of something, I call him. On his grand opening, he realized that he didn't have enough fries. Eight in the morning, he's calling. Hey, I need fries. I can be a jackass and be like, I got none. Mm -hmm. Right? Because the fries, that we, we use the same fries, right? Yeah. But you can't just buy them from a store. They have to be ordered and delivered. Yeah, yeah. They're special order fries. Tom, yeah, come grab as many cases as you need. Came. Picked up the cases and got fries and went. This guy's direct competition. Competition is healthy, bro. It's keeping me on my feet. If I don't have competition, I get lazy. I can't be creative. I can't give you as a consumer the best version of, of myself, of right? Yourself, of my yeah. product. Yes. So with that, being, that being said, competition is the greatest thing out there. Don't get discouraged. Help. If you see someone that's your competition and wants to teach them. Bro, I'll give you the big example. Big Red right here. He's, he's the pit master. I told him I want to do smoked wings. He does smoked wings. He told me, all right. Went and grabbed, went and grabbed me a smoker and gave me a smoker. Yeah. He don't got to do that. He went and grabbed me a smoker. Shout and told me, this Red. is how we do it. This is what we're going to do. You guys got to check out Big Red Barbecue and Westland, Ford and Wayne Road. Yeah, I'm about to go try that out for sure. But, for uh, sure. Like, you know what I'm saying? So everybody's like, like help. Yeah, like, your, your whole thing is like, we can all work together and be competition. 100%. Yeah. Why am I going to sit here and get discouraged because you're opening up something? Bro, if I'm so confident in my product, I shouldn't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. If you're so confident and you know you're the best because everyone says, I'm the best, I'm the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you going to discourage if someone else opens up? If someone does the same thing you do, who cares? Prove to them that you're better.
Show me what you're made of. Put your money where your mouth is and bet on yourself and give on yourself every single time. Facts. Yo, this is going crazy, bro. But it's the truth. Yeah, no, no. You know, like, I don't need to ash, right? Yeah, you can ash before it ashes on you. For real? Why do you tell me to do it then? Big Red told me not to do it. Am I doing this right? I feel like a, I feel like a complete loser. I feel like a little kid right now. Why? Right. There you go. But, uh, but yeah, like even you, for example, I always give you shit. You always give me shit. I'm always drilling you. Yeah, I don't want to be here anymore, honestly. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know he's about to go off. No, because I'm always telling you, come on, to fail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do I it. Know, I know, I know. To fail. Get that bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't get too comfortable. Someone's going to come out there one day from yeah. your community, right? Because everyone wants to eat. Everyone wants to make a living. Yes. And they're going to come and compete. And they're, they're, they might come out to be better than you. What are you going to do? Not that, saying you're not growing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. What you're doing, what you and my hand are right doing is, is crazy. Yeah. Like, I give you guys respect. Like, from, from the videos to the, to the photos to the drones to, to everything that's going on. You guys yeah. are killing it. Yeah, I mean, there's always room to grow. I took a lot, and this is me being honest. I'm not trying to like you know boost you up, but I took a lot of our conversations when I boost come it, to boost do. Boost me up, boost me up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so when I come and I talk to you and you give me a lot of shit about it, I appreciate it only because it gives me so much to think about. Like my 40 minute drive back to where I live from Dearborn is like, yo, Ali said like, is it bullshit? Do I am I why am I frustrated with it? Or like, was he actually spinning some facts? Like, how do I implement this in my thing? You know what I mean? Because a lot of the times, and I know people think like this, Ali does food. What the fuck does he know about video? You know what I mean? A lot of people think like that, right? But my thing is, is like, no, he's, he's an entrepreneur. He knows about business. So there's something that he can always offer, you know? Like when you, like have the concept of like, and I see you do it twice. Make it a food truck, then you make it into a restaurant. So you can start small, like really small, and then make it into something big. Yeah, listen, never jump too big. Mm. I'm a strong believer in, hey, Test. If, if I'm climbing stairs, for example, if I go one step at a time, I'm going to make it up there. Yeah. If I take two steps at a time, I might fall. If I do three, especially with my short ass, I'm falling straight on my face, no, right? Three, I'm going to fall too. Like, so take baby steps. Like, don't, don't go too big too quick. Mm. Because, I mean, if you got it like that, shoot, do it. Yeah. But I mean, most of us don't got it like that. Like we yeah. gotta start somewhere. So start small. Yeah. If it works out, works out. If it doesn't work out, what's the worst? You lost some money, move on, man. Like yeah. shit happens. Like I took a franchise that I invested, well me and my partner invested like 160K into, yeah. right? In total eventually. Like, at 21, right? No, at, like five years ago five into years Beaver ago. Tales, oh, right? Beaver Tales, yeah, yeah. And then we're like, bro, okay, you know what? Screw it. I call my partner like, hey, we're not doing beaver tails no more. This is how this is how much we trust each other, right? Right. We're not doing beaver tails no more. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, we're doing holy cluck. And we had spoken about Nashville chicken joint, right? Mm -hmm. Like briefly. Yeah. And I told him, okay, the next day we're doing holy cluck. Damn, that's a great name. This is what we're doing. Now I'm telling you, oh, but man, we already invested all this money. We've only had it for not even like maybe a year now. And what? Like, I I I'm your partner because I believe in you. You're my partner because you believe in me. Yes. Let's do it. We right. trust, the, trust the process. Right. We did it slowly. And we opened up in May, our food truck. In August, we had secured our first location, first mm -hmm. store. The money we made that summer paid for that store. Mm. That's, we were killing it. Alhamdulillah, like that's from God. Like I, I don't take the, the, the glory. I give that, all that glory to God because... I'm a strong believer in God's going to give you what's meant for you. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. You can't take my rizit, right? You can't take what's mine, and I can't take what's yours. God already has it written for yes, all of us. Yes, I'm a strong believer in that, right? Yes. So you just got to have faith in God and in yourself. And yeah. Just keep going. So you were kind of like working and then dumping back into your next Everything. Business. I still this day. Oh, wow. Till this day. I don't take, believe it or not, uh, like my profits that I make, I don't, I, I don't, I invest that money. Mm. Um, like I have a business that funds my expenses yeah. and everything else gets saved and I just reinvest. And that's how I was, like, 
I've only been building realistically the last hardcore three years. You was cr- so since you met me, basically. When I met you, that's when I started. That's 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 when you I, were you were actually talking about it. I didn't time. have holy clock at the time. You didn't have holy clock, but you no. were talking. You were extremely talking. I about had it. beaver tails, yeah, which I knew it wasn't what I wanted to do, right? Yeah. I had a nutrition shop. I just opened a nutrition shop. Yeah. That same year, I ended up opening the beaver, holy clock food truck. Yes. Then that year, I opened up the restaurant. The restaurant, yep. The next year, I just Let's kept go on going with what I was doing. Um, I didn't open up anything, and then this year. I opened up So Cheesy Food Truck. Yes. The year before that, though, I will say we ended up opening another food truck, a Holy Cluck. Food truck, yeah. Food truck, another one. Yeah. um, For events and stuff and catering. And then just recently, we, well, when July, we opened up the Holy Cluck, So Cheesy Food Mm -hmm. Truck. July, August, September, October, we decided we wanted to do make this into So Cheesy and open up in So Cheesy. Quick. Yeah, bro. It was like four months. Four I don't. Five months. I don't. I don't overthink things. Oh yeah, yeah. I, you, yeah. If you I can say be I'm going to yeah, do you it. Yeah, you're gonna do it. You're gonna go do uh, it. That's it. I'm gonna do it. That's it. Straight up. If you're gonna think about it too long, you're never gonna do it. You're never gonna do it. Okay. For real? If you think about it for too long, you know some people are like a little bit timid, man. But I'm the type of person that if I think about it for too long, I get bored. Like I get sick of it. Oh, okay. So it's like, okay, I have an idea. I'm excited. Let's go. I got my team behind me, backing me up, right? Yeah. And I don't believe, like, I don't have workers. Like, I believe I have a team. Like, Mm -hmm. without me, there is no team. Without the team, there is no me. I can't run the place by myself. And without the shop, they don't have a job, right? And most of my workers, the vast majority of them, last last for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I don't turn over staff quick. Um, even though I'm dealing with a lot of like uh, younger individuals, high schoolers, early year college, but they stick around like until they kind of figure out, hey, now it's time for me to go and build my career. Yeah. Right. Um, you have a really good like. You you've seen the most yeah, faces, and yeah. my workers so like my old staff members and stuff, my team, they still they still come back. Pop yeah, in. Like, yeah. Even if they don't work for me, they'll still come back and hang out. Like yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and I I still have the. Like the, the, the group messages and they still stay in them and we still talk and I still am relevant in their life because I'm not, I'm not here to, to have a worker. Mm-hmm. I'm here to have like a family member. Yeah. Per se. You want to have a good, you, you, you do thrive on joking around with, with them, but then also being stern and serious. You have to be. But then you're also like. You're very much like a older brother kind of role that you take. You know what Definitely. I mean? Like, 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 a, like, a, like, very serious. Obviously, somebody to kind of look up to, but also like you have a good relationship with them. You know what I mean? And you make the workplace as fun as possible. And I'll give you the, an example. I had a, I had a girl one time when we first opened up Holy Clock. She mm. came to the restaurant, crying. Like she was there eating, but she was crying. And she came up to me and she was like, uh, "Can I get a job here?" And a lot of my work was like, no, don't hire, don't hire, don't hire. Not because she was a bad person. Just because she, she personally didn't fit in. Like, she was very, like, she had a very dry personality. Oh, okay. Um, she didn't, like, smile. Like, and that's just her personality, right? Yeah, yeah. Everyone's different. I'm like, no, I'm going to give her a job. I hired her. And I was like, I'm going to change that. Like, I want to give this girl the best, like, Give her the best version of herself, yeah. right? And I knew, I, and I had a feeling like I was able to kind of change her ways a little and she would be good for the business. So she came in and she started working. And remind you, when we first opened Holy Cluck, you saw how it was. How it was. We, were, we sold out almost every single day. Not the food truck, the restaurant. The restaurant, yeah. I couldn't believe what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, Opening day was crazy. Well, well I want to get back to that because yeah. I, I have a funny story with that. Yeah. But I brought her in and I literally told her, you're not allowed to work the cash. You're not allowed to deal with any customer. Here's a milkshake station. I want you to sit here, just make these milkshakes, and nonstop, by the way, like, we would do like 150 milkshakes, 200 milkshakes throughout the six hour, seven hour window we were open. So it was nonstop milkshakes, right? Yeah. We hand spin our milkshakes, they take time. So just look at this wall and do that. <laughs> Literally nonstop, I'd be like, I don't want to say her name, but I was like, so and so. I go out there, like, smile. Yeah. She's like, I am smiling. Like, no, smile. <laughs> so 
So you just go in there busting our balls, basically. All right? day long, like yeah. every five, ten minutes, smile, yeah. smile, smile. And eventually, she naturally would start smiling. Um, she, she didn't really know how to talk to people. Like, there's, she's still young, right? Yeah. So she doesn't have the experience. So we kind of built the experience. Now, after a year and a half later of her working for me, um, she finally moved on, got a big girl job, and she's working at a bank. Wow. And gives amazing customer service, smiling, always, she walks in, now she walks in, smiling. She's walking, yeah. now she's like always jolly, right? So we're trying to give these young individuals, um, teach them how to have real good social, you know, skills yeah, yeah. For, their, for, for their life, right? For yeah, their yeah. real life, right? Um, and that's that's kind so of you're what very we're, much aware that like that's all these kids are gonna grow up and they're gonna 100%. leave. It's, okay, okay, so you know. Listen, some people that work with me, this is a career. Like I have chefs, right? I have actual cooks. That this is their this is a career. Yeah. And obviously, like we we give them an opportunity. We give them really good opportunities, right? And that's why they're with us. Like I got a guy you know, at Holy, right? Yeah. Let's not name names. He's been with me since the food truck. Yes. Right, and he's there open the clothes six days a week, and because we're giving them an actual like good livelihood, mm -hmm. right? Which a lot of places that in, in our line of business won't can't give, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would let, rather lose a little bit from my pocket, but to have workers that are going to be stable and committed to their place, yeah, 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 and will work there and will take. Will treat that business like it's their own. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? And I will say he does too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like when he wants to and stuff like that. So um, I always fight with him. You yeah, know that. Yeah, I yeah, give yeah, him yeah, shit yeah, all yeah. the time. I but know, bro. I love that guy, bro. But he's, yeah, he's been around for a while and he does live off of you. So yeah, like well, me that's an we'll accomplishment fight. right there, bro. The fact that he can run his whole family. Yeah, and you see us. We'll fight. Yeah. One, I will start yelling at each other, and he'll get mad at me, and I'll get yeah. mad at him. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten minutes later, we're joking around. Yeah, like joking around. He's family now. He's a brother. You know what I'm saying? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You do. You do treat your employees well, man, I would say. I mean, they all bust your balls, too, but... Um, and that's probably why I keep coming back, too. Because if you're, like, a jackass, bro, I would never come Bro, back. you come and you see how it is. We just sit and have a good time. Chill the whole time, bro. Right? And right. everybody knows me now. Everybody loves me, so... Yeah, you're lovable, I mean, bro. I mean, I feel it, you know? Zane's the guy. Um, but, yeah, so pivoting off of that, off your, off your success and stuff like that, and then also me coming in, kind of. Um, I never met... I, mean, I did some restaurants before you and a little bit after you, but I've never met somebody as consistent on social media as you, bro. I can't think of one other person that doesn't have like a like a personality following. Like Ali Bazi is the man, like that's in front of so cheesy and in front of Holy, that like that's as consistent as you are. Okay, so your Holy Cluck is consistent. Holy Cluck's page is consistent. So cheesy is consistent. Like, where did that come from? Like. Why did you think that like leveraging social media and TikTok and Instagram was a big deal for your business and growing? <clears throat> we'll go back to what I was saying. Go back, yeah. Opening day? Is there any tomorrow? No, no, oh. not even about that. Uh -huh. About the fact that consistency and there's other people that's going to do things better than me. Yeah, yeah. Right? So how am I going to stay relevant? Right. So you were thinking about this? 100%. But you were thinking about it before the store even opened. 100%. Because yeah. I understood that there's always going to be someone that's going to... Okay, let's just say, for example, I opened up, nothing I did, the first Nashville chicken shop within my area. Yeah. I knew once I opened up, right, they're going to start coming through one by one by one, right? A lot of people, not a lot, but a few people had Nashville chicken sandwiches because that trend was starting to build up in Cali. Mm -hmm. So people here were introducing it into their restaurants. Yeah. But in our area, no one had an actual Nashville chicken shop. Shop, yeah. We were, if not the first, one of the first mm -hmm. to do it. But I knew that wasn't going to last long. And that's why even like at Holy Cluck, when we opened up the restaurant, we introduced so many different variables and introduced so many different items where we started off with two chicken sandwiches, then four. Now we have eight different varieties of chicken sandwiches. We got nuggets and wings and loaded fries, loaded mac and cheese. Smash burgers. Now we're introduced a full line of smash burgers. Yeah. Because we were able to kind of 
nail what we did. We were, alhamdulillah, successful in what we were, we, you know, what we were doing. And now we had the opportunity and the space to kind of grow it a little more, right? Um, so we built that Holy Cluck, and now we're inside of Holy Cluck. We built a brand called Unholy yeah. Smash Burgers. The holiness is the chicken. The competition, which is beef, is yeah. unholy smash burgers, right? Mm. Um, and that's how we ran with it. And we introduced, what was it, this month, seven smash burgers. Yeah. Smash burgers are becoming a big trend. And we were like, okay, like everyone does burgers. Yeah. I want to do smash burgers. Yeah. I know people are starting to get into it. People are doing it. I'm not the first. Yeah, I see that but, you're constantly like coming up with ideas and constantly changing. Yeah. And- and reforming, you've done your, you redone your menu like twice already, I think. More, right? More maybe? Yeah. I've so honestly changed my menu, I think, six or seven times. Yeah, which is crazy because, like, if I come one time in, like, the last six months, the next time I come, it'll be completely different. You'll still have your essentials? Yeah, yeah. The main product will be, the main course will be there. New, oh. You'll see new items and you'll yeah. see, um, I mean, new sandwiches. Um, different ways of doing things, uh, introducing specials, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. every month, tip usually, we're bringing out a new special. You know the crazy thing I saw you do? 50% off. Oh, we, by the way, we do that every year. Yeah, you're crazy. Every <laughs> year on our anniversary of the store, we do 50% Holy Cluck, off yeah. at Holy Clock, and it's coming in February. So if this video is dropped, anyone of them. This Michigan, video is dropping February 1st. Stay tuned. Mid February, we will have 50% off. For the weekend, off I'll, everything in the store. I sent you this clip. And man, last year was it was crazy, crazy bro. <laughs> like I, <laughs> I had crazy. to drop an extra six staff members per all yeah. day. Like yeah, it was wild. Like remember the the the, the bloopers mm-hmm. and the funny clips we did. And, but it's a good time. Like people go there and we're just having a good ass time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not work. It's work, but it's not work at the it's same time. It's not unbearable, bro. Yeah, so, you know what I mean. Um. Everybody's like there for one and one and one thing. Yeah, and we're right? busy. Honestly, like, honestly, your employee. There's like, I mean, I worked at McDonald's. That'll be my only fast food restaurant kind of experience. I worked at McDonald's before, and then Dunkin' Donuts. It was the only place that, and it was like I, I couldn't wait to leave. But I see your, a lot of your employees like linger on, and they'll throw out ideas, especially when you're testing new stuff. Like a lot of people get involved into it. Like your employees get involved. Hundred percent because yeah. they're, they're. But back to my business. question, what I want to ask you is, what like what made you like what goes through your head when it's like okay i need to be active on social media like where did that come from because there's a lot of old heads out here bro that are not using not leveraging social media like you are because you're consistently thinking of stories you're making full videos to put on there you're involving other like food um influencers to come to your uh, to your shop not just that but you're also making like good job on you but you're making like a whole bunch of phone videos on your own now you're talking a little bit more you're getting your employees a little bit more involved promoting the brand constantly on social media so like where did that come from so marketing has always been a thing right mm. so let's just say let's take it back before social media before instagram yeah how did restaurants market they would send flyers to the houses right before i had holy cluck and all this stuff i was partnering up in a restaurant in dearborn heights and i worked there for three months and their social media instagram was still brand new like it just came out yeah not everyone was on it and people didn't know how to utilize it, right? Especially myself. So we would send flyers to the houses. We'd make ads. Um, Locally. Yeah, you drop off like business cards or like little pamphlets at local businesses in the surrounding area. You go knocking door to door from business to business, dropping off flyers. Hey, if you, if you order lunch from us, you'll get 10% off, whatever it was, right? So social media now comes around and it changes all that. No one does, even pizza places, like they don't send flyers no more. They don't even do delivery themselves. They got DoorDash and Grubhub and Uber Eats and whatnot. So this is the new marketing. And I learned that, hey, if I wanna put my name out there, this is how I have to do it. I have to be creative. I have to, um, I have to create, right? I have to create content. Content, yep. So in the beginning, I, had, I didn't know how to do it. Because when I first met you to now, you're completely different. I didn't know you're how. You're a different animal now, bro. I called to fail. To fail. I need video. F- to one, fail two, three. this, that. I want to do this. What are we going to do? This? And we would yeah. sit and talk and bring some for hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's like, okay, to fail, come. I want one, two. Th- now you know what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but the little extras that make these videos go viral, mm -hmm. right? By the way, this man has millions of views on his videos um, across both accounts. So, so and and you just kind of I I study what other people are doing, not even in our area. Like, mm -hmm. go on Instagram Explorer, yeah, right, and just scroll and scroll and see what others are doing, right? So I'll give you the example. Like recently, I created a video of someone pulling up in front of so cheesy in a truck. And I was like, where are you coming from? And I had my phone. And she's like, I was in Gross Point. Oh, no, I mean, I did that one. You were with me? Yeah, I was oh, yeah, you, you. Yeah, yeah. We I told me, that day. Yeah, remember, I told a recorder. Yeah. Like, where are you coming from? It's Gross Point. Yeah. She's like, I drove all the way to Gross Point to have so cheesy. It just yeah. came out. I'm like, okay, perfect. Yeah. Right? And that's it. I took that clip. And then I took the, the footage, the raw footage that Tufel had shot of the, the store and, and the things that we, and then the old food. videos of like food. And I just literally took snippets, pieces, put them together. It literally took me five minutes. Yeah, this man's a full, full fledged editor. But again, now. like I never, I couldn't do it this fast back in the day. Like yeah, yeah. just now it's natural. Like it's natural for you. It just yeah. it became natural. I've learned it, you're right. And I give you the, I give you all the, the, the glory and, and you taught me. Like literally, like if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't know how to do this, right? Mm -hmm and just this video launched it and it got over 300,000 views it got shared like five or six i think seven thousand times it got like six thousand your likes. other viral one bro the one the one i like the the ice cream the ice cream one the troll so, video that you yeah had, so you're strolling bro people think that everything has to be positive right i'm serious yeah before i talk about that video yeah I've told you this before, I've told everyone, and I live by the saying. If, you, if you're in a neg negative situation, don't look at the negative, look at the positive, right? So this negative situation happened, right? How are you gonna make it positive? Something happened to my, in my life, and I won't elaborate on what happened, but it was a very, very negative situation. Right. And Red knows about the situation, and it was extremely negative. And I woke up, and I was like, shit, like this is, this is bad, right? And I took that situation and I flipped it into a positive and I flourished, you know? Um, and so, yeah, you just don't ever stick on the negative. If you're in a, if you're in a shitty, shitty situation, everyone's going to be in a shitty, a shitty situation. Change it and make it into a positive. So try to find something that you can latch on to that other, negative other, than, is, other than the negative emotion. Right? Listen, w when people are growing, you don't grow like this, mm. right? You grow like this, right? Like this is how, this is how growth happens. Like a heartbeat. Okay? Literally. It's, you'll never just yeah. up and down, up and down, up and down. But gradually, it goes up higher, goes down, and goes up a little higher, and goes down. You know what I mean? When you're down, I'll try to go up because you need to learn, yeah. right? Like that dip is now you're, you learn, now you have the experience to bring it back up, right? Yeah. And try to keep it going up. Um, so yeah, again, learn from your negatives and make yeah. it with the positive. With that being said, that video, for example, that you're talking about, people latch onto negative stuff. If you go on any video of mine or any video of anything out there, you'll always see the negative comments so much more than the positive. For like 90% are negative comments, you get the 10% that are positive, right? Mm -hmm. If you go on any restaurant and you go on Google and you search how many stars they have, right? You're always going to, you're, they're not gonna be 5.0, why? Because you're going to have the negative people are always going to leave a bad review. If you go into a restaurant, are you gonna leave a positive review? Depends. Probably not though. Most likely, the average person is not. Oh yeah, no, no. If I was gonna go and I walked out and I had a good experience, I'm not putting a review. But if you had a shitty, if you had a bad experience. If I had a really bad experience, probably. Yeah. Right? Like that's what's going to happen. In any business, especially yeah. in the food business, you're seeing hundreds of customers a day. You're not gonna satisfy everyone. Mistakes are going to happen. But the ones you do don't satisfy, those right. are the ones that are louder. Yeah, but if you, but I want to tell this to everyone. If you're going into a restaurant and you're eating and you're not having a good experience, yeah. say something. Talk to a staff member. See if they can make it better. Don't go start yelling, making a scene, because it's not going to make it better, number one. Yeah. Okay. Second of all, 
explain to him, yo. A big red's you... nodding his head. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> big red's like nodding his imagine head. you come in here, like, I had a guy the other day, came in here, he got food, and he found a baby here, like, probably like an eyelash or something. Like, yeah. okay, like, how you, as a, as a, as a, as a person working in the business, like, a little eyelash falls, you're not going to notice it, right? Yeah. He came up to me, he's like, you don't like this, can't talk to him, like, yeah, he's like, it's a little eyelash. I told him, may have been from a hand hair, something like. Oh, it's really small. Okay. Like this, like nothing, like yeah. not from not from the face or anything. Yeah. I told him, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna make you a new one. Please forgive me. Like, but understand that this is not with another hand. If it was a long piece of hair or something, I get it. Why are they not wearing hats? Why are they not wearing hair nuts, beard nuts, whatever it is, right? Yeah. But it's a little piece of hair. like you can't control that. Like you shed hair. Everyone sheds hair. Everyone has hair. Yeah. Right. An eyelash or whatever. He understood. He's like, no, I understand. I told him, he's like, no, no, no. It's a little piece of hair on the side. I just want you to notice for you, right? He wouldn't, let me, he wouldn't allow me to remake him something. So I ended up bringing him out, like, drinks, right? On the house, this and that. Like, I want him out. Yeah, I'm looking out. out, yeah. If this guy could have been a person with, like, majority people, go, I found hair in my food, blah, 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 blah. But he never told us anything. How are we going to fix a mistake? Mm-hmm. If you don't tell us about your bad experience... How can we fix it? You're coming and you're bashing us, bro. But we have a family, we have livelihoods too. Yeah. Same, way, same way you do, right? Respect that, right? And understand that this is a livelihood, okay? And if I, you come and tell me, and me as a staff member or a business owner or whatever, don't try to make it better, go bash. You have all the right to. But respect the fact that you're walking into a business and mistakes are bound to happen. So give us a chance. You can be driving and by mistake hit someone. It's it's called an accident. Mm -hmm. Accidents happen. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Going back to what we were saying about that video. So I took this video, right? And I want to do something crazy. I want to grab attention. Yeah. How am I going to grab everyone's attention? Positive videos don't grab attention. They grab... Nothing crazy, right? Yeah. So I was like, okay, let's do something wild. Yeah, you're just showing like a product off, you know? Like that's, um, it's going to be there. We did something very disruptive. And I was talking to actually a, creative, a, a content creator yesterday in the meeting. And he was telling me, I don't know what I was saying. He's like, what you did was something, it's called disruptive media, which I never heard of before what yeah. it's called. But that's a term is disruptive. We took a Nashville chicken sandwich and we had a scoop of ice cream inside the sandwich. That video went viral. Yeah. It went viral. I swear, I kid you not to fail, I would be walking in grocery stores and people that I don't even know who, who they are come to me like, man, are you crazy? Excuse me? How'd you do uh, ice cream inside a chicken sandwich? <laughs> I'm like, did I get your attention? He's like, yeah, obviously. I'm like, I did my job. Yep. I released that video that weekend. I probably did three to four times myself. Right? And then what we did a follow-up video. We actually served the ice cream chicken sandwich. A lot of people liked it. A lot of people didn't like Get it. Get the heck out of you, really? Yeah, oh, hell yeah. The first day I sold out of it. I had no more ice cream. Big <laughs> Hams, which is like a food reviewer that like is either brutally honest. Yeah. He's brutally honest, either brutally positive or negative. He tells yeah. you the way it is. He came to get it and I didn't I sold out. He came back the week after. He got it. And he said, he's like, it's not my cup of tea, but it's not something that I would throw up like people eat chicken and waffles and chicken and ice cream like it's yeah, yeah. it's a thing right yeah, yeah. But then we had to do a follow-up video with the milkshake we said i had one of my staff members go you guys gave us a lot of heat for the nashville chicken uh, nashville ice cream chicken sandwich but we got one better for you nashville uh ice cream chicken sandwich milkshake <laughs> and obviously people are like what the hell is this so we we took this chicken sandwich, put it in a blender, blended it. And you put the tape. Pour it in a cup. Put the tape. We didn't really blend it. Like we didn't show them. We we didn't. It, it's blend. an old video. Yeah yeah, 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 right. We didn't actually blend whatever. We just blend ice cream and some seasoning to give it the color, or whatever. Yeah. Pour it in a cup, and she took it and acted like she was drinking it, and then we took a uh, a little uh, clip Snipper of from Dave uh, Chappelle's Dave comedy Chappelle show. saying, "Gotcha, bitch." <laughs> gotcha, bitch. <laughs> and it just it's just something that catches and grabs grasps the attention of the of your audience right yeah, yeah definitely but it it makes them be like what the hell and what's that do if you've never been to holy clock what's it do it makes you be like okay what the hell are these guys serving and you'll go on my page and you'll actually what we're serving and we have great content thanks to you and 
people are like, oh man, like I gotta try this place. I got, I, bro, I've, I got so many new customers. Like I've never seen these faces before, right? You're a regular, you're a regular, regular. You see what that come in here and there. And everyone that comes in, we take their phone number. So we put in their phone number and it shows us they ordered, they didn't order before. And we got probably like 50% new customers that yeah. week. And it was great. So it's disrupt the I'm, norm, grab, your, grab their attention, get them the appetite. And then just keep doing that, right? So social media has been helping, right? Oh, so yeah. you, like, what do you think? Like you being more active on social media has been, has been helping your businesses? 100%. Listen, social media is everything now. What do you do when you're bored? You go on Instagram, TikTok, everyone. What? We have this in our hands all day long. When you got nothing better else to do, when you're in bed at night, you're flipping through your social media. Like this right. is what you, this is the norm now. Right. So you have to be on top of it. And plus, if you don't, someone else is going to do it. And someone else is going to do a good job at it. As a consumer, you're going to go to whoever is pushing their brand the hardest. So what do you think would be, hey, give me like one advice. Give me like one piece of nitbit for like somebody that's like might start off like starting. Say I, say I just opened up a new business on Like what, what would you tell me to do? What create. Would, create. Create. Research. See what others are doing. Replicate. Right. Um, and just, you have to obviously have a good product. If you have, if you have a shitty product, no one's going to come to you. And listen, don't get discouraged by someone coming and leaving you a negative review, bro. For every day, I'll get five good reviews, let's just say. I'm getting five bad reviews. I might be getting five bad reviews and one good review. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not here to, uh, to satisfy everyone. I wish I could. What I like, you might not like. Culturally, your taste buds are different than my taste buds, yes. right? Yes, 100%. For example, as an Arab, we eat raw meat, right? Like it's literally raw meat, mm -hmm. we, right? If I were to say this to someone outside of my culture, they'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, are you fucking mad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a cultural thing. Yeah, yeah. You got... I can't even tell you how many billions of people on the world that eat raw meat. Yeah, yeah. There's something that you culturally you might eat. Um, let's just, for example, say goat, right? And in, in the Indian, Pakistani, I don't know, maybe in the Bangladesh community too, they eat goat. If you you, you couldn't catch me dead eating goat, just because you not because goat? not because it's not. I've never tried it, but for me in the in the head, you lahma, bro? but goat, like I think about like man, like goat. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're not used to that. That. Oh, it's not. A, it's not a. It's not a thing that you have. Exact. Okay. Culturally, it's not a thing. Oh. We eat lamb. I didn't know that. But goat, it's not. Like, you don't, you'll never go to an Arabic restaurant realistically and see goat on the menu. Like it's not something that we, we oh, grew damn, up on. Damn, but goat is different. Okay. You right. So I might and I might try. <laughs> I right? didn't know. No, really, I didn't yeah. know the difference. Is there a goat or lamb, goat? Is, I I didn't know they were that different. See, I've never tried it, but just. I don't, oh, I don't I like mean, he lamb. would know. I mean, Big Red would know, yeah. you know? He knows his meat. I mean, <laughs> you know, so you just, you can't, everyone's taste buds are different, right? You might come to my So be show. okay with failing a few times or you just can't. be being disappointed a few times. It's normal, bro. You, you, you win some, you lose some. Yeah, but don't quit. Right? Don't quit. If you feel like you're getting too many negative and not enough positive, Maybe then you really are doing something wrong. You need right? to change. So when we first opened, I was getting, we were so busy, I couldn't, I couldn't keep up with quality. Like, just yeah. to be honest, like, I, I wish I could. And I was new. I didn't know what I was doing. And you learn, like, you, you realize, like, shit, okay, I'm doing something wrong. I need to fix it. You fix. And you hope and you pray that the customer that had a bad experience one day might come back and try so, you again yeah. because a friend might come and be like man i had them the other day they were great you know give them another shot and you just you try to you try to evolve yeah um so even if you have a positive experience try to evolve even if you have a negative experience yeah. also try to you, evolve. you always got to evolve you always got to be creative you gotta think outside the box try to bring something new um what we brought here at so cheesy is we took the average restaurant like fast casual restaurant concept but we elevated it. Mm -hmm. 
so everywhere you go you see steak sandwiches you see a philly steak sandwiches I'm yeah like, no nah, nah, i'm not gonna do what everyone else does i want a steak sandwich because everyone loves a steak sandwich right well most people so what did i do we we brought an actual piece of steak we grill it we shave it instead of me using sauce uh, off a, from a bottle from a, from a restaurant you know uh, from a supplier we create every sauce in house every ingredient is created from scratch so so cheesy is a scratch kitchen everything is made from scratch literally like 99 percent of the items we, we carry mm-hmm. is made from scratch right yeah down to our ketchup like yeah we get we don't make the actual ketchup but we take that ketchup and we add so many different spices and flavors to make it our own taste right? yes 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 um we make our own ranch our own honey like our own barbecue like honey sriracha so you can replicate but then add your own style and your own flavor you have to, to be different right so yeah. that's what we did we just we wanted to be a little different um we started using a, a better quality bread than, than what most people are used to we started using a ciabatta bread ciabatta bread is a very it's a very expensive bread yeah i can go get a piece of French bread, let's just say, for 30 cents. A ciabatta bread cost me a dollar something. So why pay that extra? Because I want to give you that experience. I want you to be like, wow, this is great. I haven't had anything like this, and this is amazing. But I still want it to be affordable as an everyday item you get. Like, I ain't trying to do five-star or, or fancy dining. I want a fast, casual, just a little elevated, and a better, better quality, right? Nice, nice, brother. Nice, nice. Oh, my bad. I don't know how much more I'm supposed to smoke this, bro. This is. I mean, look where I'm, I'm at done. now. I'm done. Bro. I'm so smoking. I'm done. I'm getting lightheaded. Okay. So well, you not... give me it, but why don't? Okay, I want to change things up now. I yeah. want you to give me advice. I think. What should I do different? I think for you, right, is for your business wise, your social media wise, you're doing exactly what I wanted you to do the first day I met you. Because this was my whole thing. was like, you have to keep posting. That's one thing I knew. You have to keep posting. And you're doing that already, right? The next probably thing would be coming up with ideas that are more virality, that has a little bit more viral stuff in it, that has a little bit more stuff where people can resonate with. Because the thing is, like, people know who you are. People know who, what So Cheesy is. People know what Holy is. Now it's like, how do I get this outside of my community and outside and more out so the more viral you get regardless you're gonna have eyeballs on you of course and the next thing you start all that will travel to the next thing also you see what i'm saying definitely but you're already on the right track i would just say like come up with more ideas outside of the box of hey i have a new item i mean those are still good um i love seeing it on your menu board you know um i have a new item but it's like how do i give this item an identity unholy smash burgers dope but lean more into un, uh, unholy. Little, do a little bit more, dip, uh, like you know what I mean. A little, little bit more of creative stuff. Come outside of what you're comfortable with. Definitely. That's what I would say. I would say like maybe not. A, a, like, well, most people are like that. They're uncomfortable. I mean, even this man. You think I'm comfortable doing this? I'm not. I'm literally shaking minutes before I start. When I start, I'm already second guessing. Like fuck, did I do that right? You know what I mean. But the point is to just go get through it. As soon as you get through it, right when you're in the middle, you're like, okay, I'm having fun. Right at the end, you're like, I can't believe I just did that. And I think everybody feels like that. The, the beginning, you just have to go through it. A lot of chefs, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of businessmen, they're so afraid of how, what their image is going to be like. Am I going to look dumb? Do I look nice? Oh, man, I'm dusty right now. But the thing is, like, that's you 99% of the day. That's how people see you. And people love you because they see you like that. So it's like, why, what makes you think that other people won't? Definitely. And why do you care what other people think? You're doing everything. You're doing something outside of the box anyway. You know what I mean? Like, that, 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 like that's, what I, that's what I start to realize, where it's like, if you're just yourself 24-7, and then you do it on top of a camera, and then you try to change yourself, I can tell that you've changed yourself. Like, in the beginning of this conversation, I could tell you were a little bit more reserved. You were going yeah, more course. business interview type. As soon as you start smoking a cigar, loosened up completely. You were yourself. As soon as, as soon as I start talking about something that you're interested in, that, that you love, you start blowing up, bro. Glowing, literally. You know what I mean? And I, and I think that's what, it's the, just the beginning. If, you, if everybody can just get out of that comfort zone, just get past that, then you'll start to see everybody's true personality and, and what makes them great and what other people think. Because, you know, there's always somebody that's supporting you, bro. 
course. You know course. what I mean? There's always, it, it, it might be nine people saying that, yo, you're dumbass, don't do that idea, la, 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 whatever, whatever. But it's that one or two people that you have next to you that's like, yo, I think you could do it, bro. Honestly, I think you have it in you. Those are the people that love you. So it's like, they see something in you. Don't think about the negative. You're absolutely right, bro. Like, don't ever think about the negative. You can learn from all of it. But try to stay. Listen, positive. don't get me wrong. Like that negative, yeah, is gonna bring you down. Yeah, it's gonna make you. It's gonna guess. hurt. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying, hey, oh my god, I'm in a negative situation, and now I'm just positive. Let's walk mm-hmm. around. I'm jolly. No, no, mm-hmm. no. It takes time. It takes time, right? But don't let that, you know. Um, but yeah, so don't let that be that 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 breaking point, you know, for you, where like it makes you or break you. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Let it make you, not break you, at least. This was a good one. It was. I'm enjoying it. Oh, last question. We're about to wrap this up. Um, what's next for you, bro? I have no clue. You have no clue? I mean, I know I have a few ideas. You have, like, an overall, like, end goal? I do. Like, a lot of people are like, I want to make a million. I want to do this. I want to have 100,000 stores. I want 15 food trucks. I want, the, I want this. I want that. You know what I mean? No. Listen, I'm going to wait till my kids graduate college. <laughs> Stuff like that. Everyone's always chasing the money, right? Yeah. I can tell you this. Yes, 100%. I was that person. Yeah. I was a person for the longest time. I was just chasing the dollar, right? Yeah. I didn't have the dollar. I wanted that dollar so bad, right? right. When you ha- when you, and I'm not saying oh, like, the dollar can be a million. I'm not saying a million dollars. I'm saying but just be comfortable, right? Instead of busting my ass. When I first got married, I, I had nothing. I got yeah. married. I could you not? When I got married, I had eight hundred dollars to my name. Mm-hmm. my wedding day like it's crazy like you yeah. know what i mean but i i had i had strong faith and that god was going to, to guide me and he's going to open up doors so i know i don't chase the money because i know if you tra- if you chase sorry the vision mm-hmm. the money will follow right if you're passionate about what you do the money will follow always do what you love and if, it's, if you're doing something that this is not what you love, move on, bro. It's okay to, to close a, 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 you being in your comfort zone and you close that door and now you, you're doing something that you're not comfortable doing but you know this is what you're passionate about, yeah. do it. And if you don't know what that is, go searching for it. Try to find out what you love. Especially to these younger kids. They, when you're young, a lot of people are just very ambitious and they're, they're 17, 18, 19, 20, 22 year olds, whatever it is. And they're just so locked in and like, oh my God, uh, I want this. They look at one person yeah. that's successful and you know, beyond and, successful yeah, in their like age that. group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, why is it not me? Bro, it's okay. Like, this is their time. Yes. Your time will come, right? Put in the work. Put in the work, yep. If you're, even if you're working for someone, don't give that person 100%. Give that person, that person 200%. Yep. Okay. Bust your ass. It might take a month. It might take a year. It might take 10 years. Right. It might take a lifetime. It might not happen. Mm-hmm. Someone is going to notice yeah. your hard work. It can be the business owner. It can be a friend of his. It can be a family member. It can be someone that you just met and they, a, a customer walking in and seeing how hard you're working. Right. And they might be like, hey, I want to do one, two, three, and I think you're what it takes. Like, you're what I need. Don't sit there and be like, ah, oh, it's a job. I'm getting paid minimum wage. I don't gonna, care if you fuck on yeah, us. Yeah, fuck it. If, I, if, they, if they fire me, I'll move on. You'll never make it, man. Yeah, You'll yeah. never make it. So Keep it's, it it's like that saying. It was like how you do something. How you do one thing is how you do everything. 100%. But I'll tell you, you're saying my angle. Yeah. My angle, I truly believe, is in the food and beverage industry. I enjoy what I do. Um, whether it's restaurants, whether it's something else in the food and beverage. I want to be in the food and beverage industry. Mm-hmm. Um, what it is exactly, I don't know what God has in store for me. Um, we change day by day, year by year. Like, who I was yesterday is not who well, I am today. today yep. um, and every day we're changing. And I believe that just follow your dream. Don't give up. Sometimes, not telling you all the time, but majority, majority of the time, follow your dream. Sometimes you can try and try and try and try and try, and it might not work. And it might not be what's for you, right? And not everyone is, is, is going to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Not everyone is going to be a nine to fiver like 
there's nothing wrong with you being a nine to fiver, right? Like I can't have a business if, if I don't have a nine to fiver, right? Yeah. And vice versa. This lifestyle that I that I that I'm in right now, that entrepreneurship, it comes with a lot of sacrifice. It comes man. with a lot. My family sacri- I sacrifice. Yeah, my your family. family my family is feels it right yeah. because I'm at work 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day, um, and I I try to give them as much time as possible. But I'm hoping that I'm able to give my kids what my father wasn't able to give me. And not saying my father wasn't a hard worker. My father busted his ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I respect that and I appreciate that. His life didn't give him the opportunity for him to have his own business and be very, very successful as like an entrepreneur. But you got the you opportunity. Know? But I have the opportunity now, right? Yeah. But what my father did molded me into who I am. I am. Yes. His hard work, his work ethic made me who I am. Absolutely. Me living 100%. through that. Yep. And so I want to be able to maybe, yes, yeah, sacrifice a little for my kids now, but hopefully in the years to come, I build something big enough for them to, if they want, take over that legacy, right? And give them an easier future. Not the future that I had. I'm not saying I'm going to give them everything. Even though I became a multimillionaire, I wouldn't give them everything. I, they'd have to earn, right? Yeah, yeah, regardless. They'd have to start from zero, even if it's in one of the businesses. But they would have to earn their title. But I just tell people to go just Yeah, just they grind. can't be a bazi with just the last name, bro. Just grind, hustle, and... And live life day by day, but this, same, is temp- this is time period in the day. Like, yeah, everything we're here is temporary. temporarily. Yeah, we're all gonna die, right? Yeah, and we're just is, we're just taking test. the opportunities that God is providing, man. That's right. It. And live I mean live an day. honest life, and try to hop out as much as you can, yeah. and do it in discreetly. Don't sit and flaunt your, uh, hey, you know, I'm like, I, I hate when people go and be like, hey, uh, I have. I'm going to donate this to the poor. Like, bro, <laughs> do it behind closed doors. Like, what are you telling don't me? flaunt that shit. Like, people, yeah. trust me, people are not looking at you like, oh my God, look at the good this guy did. Bro, you might fool some, but like, the reward is internally is good yeah. when you do it for yourself discreetly. Yes. All right. With that being said. With that being said, thank you guys. Thank you, Ali. We Allah. outside. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you it's for having me. It's been the We Outside me. Podcast. I love this. I'll see you guys on the next one. For sure.